Okay, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Load of Balls, where the average golfer tests out golf balls, gives you its convenient scores, and makes it at the very end. And uh, we're in, uh, is it episode eight or episode nine? I'm not too sure now, but so far along the way, it has mainly been, I would call premium balls. We stuck in the, uh, the Wilson DX3 into the mix, but in the main, it's been balls that have been priced at the top end. And I did mention last week, that we're now going to see a couple of videos by where we drop the price ca uh, category and let's see if the price differential sort of is then seen in performance just a reminder 89 episodes in i think it's worth reiterating the point this is all based on the quality of strike no ball will ever perform unless you put a quality strike on it and i think that without me repeating the message throughout this video Everything you're gonna see is subjective, is my performance on the day, but hopefully it gives a bit of a guideline as to what I think on today about the Titleist DT2 Softball. Now then, two Softball, first of all, let's get into the spec of the ball from Titleist perspective. What are they saying in terms of marketing claims? I very much expect it'll be the same as every other golf ball manufacturer, but I'll read it out anyway. Like I said, we expect that. Um, Oh, I mean, again, advanced aerodynamics meeting strict quality standards to ensure maximum distance, consistent piercing ball flight, interesting. And uh, the low compression core is designed to deliver low spin for longer distance, truly soft feel on all shots. Like I said, no different there then. Everybody's saying the same thing and ultimately want exactly the same things from a golf ball's performance. But how did it get on? in reality out there in the field. But before we get in the field, let's see what it did in terms of dry ball data. And we're gonna start off with a pitching wedge. Okay, so for me, interested on dry ball data, uh, we'll get to what happened out there, like I said, on the actual course very, very shortly. But in terms of dry ball data, um, looking at pitching wedge, uh, some interesting carries there, all in around the sort of, th there was variables in there um, but again, there was variables in terms of uh, ball speeds and club head speeds. So that's got to be, you know, that's again, very much down to what I said earlier, down to strike. But anyway, interesting thing for me, it spun very, very well in terms of pitching wedge. So 9-3 spin, again, great number. Um, the variables is the concern for me in terms of, like I said, ball speed um, fluctuated quite a bit. Launch angle, again, what have we got there? It's in and around 26 and 27, so stayed fairly stable, apart from that one that I popped up there at, uh, or out there at 31 degrees of launch. So in terms of the pitching wedge, it performed well and stable, and I'd say that continued into the seven iron as well, because once again, the interesting thing for me is a bit more stability in terms of performance from me in terms of the seven iron. Uh, ball speed stayed consistent. Carry distance, very, very consistent. Um, and also launch angle, very consistent. And a spin of 5,400 is really, really good. So at this stage, in terms of if you're looking just at purely dry ball data, this DT True Soft, and it's gonna be like I said, this is an economy ball to a degree, is performing very, very well. But what happened when I took it out on the course? And we're back over in Spain, it's back to the Sota Grande, and let's see what happened when I got it out there in the course we'll start off with the sort of i don't know what is this a 30 35 yard chip in you'll see again i threw the ball a little bit higher on both of these into the flag and carried a bit more of the um of the green than i did on some previous videos that we've done but i have to say this is the first time that in performance I, i've seen disappointments and you'll notice on the balls they just there's very little reaction at all um, in terms of where this ball lands and when it comes to rest. Um, 
if you look closely, like I said, and this has been the interesting thing for me is when you see the camera planted on the green and get a close up of it, as opposed to hitting shots in from whatever 30, 40, 50, 100 yards, you get a true reflection of what the ball is actually doing. And like I said, in this case, I found very little. There was a high sort of softish ball flight on these chips and they didn't react at all as I was expecting them to. Um, then if we go on to the sort of the full shot into the green, uh, once again, the videos that I shot on this particular hole, it was, it was uphill, it was into the wind. So again, assisting spin. Um, and, and once again, we've, we've seen quite a few balls zipping back off this green as well uh, in previous videos. Didn't quite do that with the, um, with the, with the true soft. Nothing wrong with what it's done. It's, it's, uh, it, it stopped a bit of spin on the ball. Absolutely fine. And once again, I'd say about the uh, subject to strike. Um, but then I compare it to the spin and zip that was on some of the other balls. And it again, probably isn't um, at that level. Then the final bit on the greens was put in and the biggest one in terms of personal, prefer personal preference uh, is put in because it's feel. And, and like I said, that's very much down to the individual. For me, it, I'd just say very much mediocre. I, I, didn't, I didn't dislike the feel, but by the same token, it didn't really give me much back in terms of the hands um, for what I was, from the strikes I was hitting with the putter. Out there on the course, my, my assessment again is about the, 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 the ball performed it's all reasonably well and I think this very much goes down to the price tag and I think what we've got to do now is ultimately I've got to get in and score this golf ball really and I think then we can talk about my overall assessment. Okay so we'll start things off as ever with the dry ball data and like I said I think if it was purely based on that and if you did your golf ball testing by dry ball data quite easily walk out and buy these things thinking that they perform very well indeed. So I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Hard to argue with the numbers that, uh, that it gave away. And like I said, interesting for me on dry ball data, apart from the odd ball in terms of ball speed, there's been massive differences on dry ball data. Um, second in is feel. Like I said, didn't do anything. I, I, I just did not get on with it too well in terms of feel. Um, in terms of being soft and, 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 and any kind of feel into the hands, I didn't really get it. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 for feel. Value is where this ball sticks out very, very well indeed. Depending on why you buy them, I mean, this can be anything from sort of £15 to £20 per dozen in the UK British pounds. Uh, so it's a very, very well-priced ball, well-positioned ball in terms of an economy ball with a, a brand name attached to it such as Titleist. So you've got to give it 9 out of 10 in terms of its value for money. But I think ultimately... Um, how you or why you buy your golf balls based on prices is, is, is always going to be down to the individual in their pocket. But ultimately, I've got to mark it on overall performance. And for me, I was disappointed. I was disappointed in the, I think one of the biggest learning curves I've had during these videos is that I'd have quite honestly, I'd have probably gained DT True Soft in the past based on the price. Um, number of balls I would in, bought in and around that sort of price bracket, thinking, uh, the ball was doing enough for a player of my capabilities and having watched like I said cameras placed on greens and what balls actually do in terms of reaction especially down at the short game end I don't think Titleist did deliver on this one and I don't think that the it does perform in and around the greens you're not getting any type of um, any type of grip any and, and it's the consistency I've talked about on other videos what you want with a golf ball is it to perform in the same way with the same strike of course you want it to do the same thing you want it to stop out but there was no way of judging especially like i said those short chips what the golf ball was going to do and how it was going to run out so that was a disappointment thing for me i'm going to score it a 7 out of 10 on performance it gives it an overall score of 8 out of 10 it doesn't impact on our uh, leaderboard and i think yet yeah, this ball scores very highly in terms of value and in all other areas that's why you're going to make a compromise because you're getting, yes, you're paying a lower price, but you're getting lower performance as well. In my very humble opinion, and like I said, it is just that one man's opinion. The important thing is, as ever, hit the ball yourselves. If, they're, if they fit, if they're good enough for you, um, then 
go ahead carry on using them like i said this is only a guide and i'm trying to put them in context to all the other golf balls in which i've tested along the way anyway that's the end as ever comments down below that is episode like i said eight or nine out of the way the next ball coming up is another one in the sort of similar price category i've got the uh, callaway super soft ball coming next so keep an eye out for that one and uh, i'll see you very very soon on the upload tv thanks for watching